Hi friends. This week, I'm going to do a few more pages out of my reverse coloring book. I've done quite a few pages and I wasn't planning on making any more videos on it, but then I saw this comment. And it made me wonder if you can make art out of the pages without drawing. So I decided that I'm going to challenge myself to do just that. The first page I'm going to do is this sort of sad grayscale one if I can decide which way is right side up. Nope, guess it's this way. I'm gonna start with alcohol markers. I've been getting a lot of videos about intuitive art recommended to me lately, and I don't know if there's like a specific definition of what it is, but since I'm just gonna be making this up as I go along, you know, using my intuition, I'm gonna call this intuitive art. To start, I'm filling in the white or blank areas of the page with color. And obviously, I'm working in a rainbow. I've looked at this page so many times and genuinely had no idea what to turn it into. It's so depressing looking, like someone cried mascara tears down the page. So I wanted to try and brighten it up with lots of color. And since the actual shapes of the black and gray on the page weren't really doing anything for me, I thought maybe if I filled in the negative space, it would speak to me a bit more. But with all of the color done, it's still just mumbling. The colors just aren't popping the way that I want. Like, I feel like my eye is still drawn more to the dark black areas. So I'm going to outline each colored area with a fine liner. This seems to be what I always do when I don't know what to do. It's like my art crutch, and I'm never giving it up. But even after that, I still want more color on this page. So next, I'm going to use some felt tip pens to add in a few more shapes. I'm looking for the lightest areas of color on the page, like the barely there gray. I'm outlining those and adding lines in all different directions. Even halfway through, I feel like this isn't adding as much color as I want, but I'm not sure what to do about it, so I'm just going to keep going through the rainbow and see where to go from there. Where I decided to go from there was a very stinky place. Literally. I thought that maybe if I outlined the super dark areas, they would look a bit more contained and less like they're oozing all over the page. But for some reason, I decided a black Sharpie was the best tool for the job. I can still smell the Sharpie just looking at this footage. Now, editing Rose kind of likes this page how it is right now, but past Rose apparently didn't. I kind of remember feeling like it still needed something more. There was just still a lot of gray. So I went in with a pink marker to cover all of the areas that weren't already outlined. And I don't hate this, but now I feel like the colors are all blending together. I don't think this is intuitive art. I think it's indecisive art. So back to my crutch, and I'm going to go back in with a fatter fine liner and re-outline all the rainbow blocks of color. All right, here we are. And yay, I don't hate it. Time to be done before I change my mind. So for this next page, I'm going in with more of a plan. It's still going to be abstract, but I have a bit more of an idea of what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to use some cheat markers to outline the color blobs. 
I was going to outline each shape in the same color, but you can barely see it. So instead, I'm going to go with a color next to it in the rainbow. Google calls these analogous colors. Props to me for keeping all of the butt jokes in my head. So I used orange to outline the yellow areas. And then I used purple for the reddish areas and green for the blue areas. Once you look closer and have to try to define each area of color, it gets a little harder to tell what is what. I mean, it doesn't really matter that much because it is abstract art, but I'm also a little OCD and super particular, so it mattered to me. This page is definitely going through its ugly phase right now, but since I have a plan, I'm not worried about it. These outlines are just the prologue. The backstory. All this mess is just setting the stage for the real star of the show, which is... Scribbles? For this page, I'm trying something called neurographic art. This method is said to stimulate new neural pathways, and it's supposed to be like a cross between psychology and art. I'm not sure how all of the science of it works, but it's cool looking. To start, you draw big looping and crisscrossing scribbles, like every kid did at some point in their childhood. But then you find any sharp corners or anywhere the lines intersect, and you round them out. After doing this once, I felt like it needed more going on, so I went back through the process again. More is definitely more. Then I'm going to fill in some of the smaller areas with circles because I want to add a few more dark sections to the page. Then I went back and outlined any of the color blobs that were on the edge of the page and not already outlined, just because I felt like that gave it a bit more of a finished edge. Last, I added some little black lines in a few different areas of the page. I chose sections that weren't outlined in color, but honestly, no one but me would ever be able to tell that. And that's another page done. I filmed the final look a few days after I actually finished the page, and I obviously forgot which direction I worked on it, but it looks great from all angles. The next one I'm going to do involves a teeny tiny bit of drawing, but not really. More just like outlining. And I promise it's super easy. I'm just going to be outlining each one of these circles. Everyone can do that. The only skill involved is just deciding which circles are in front of other circles. I'm using these felt tip flare pens for this. I'm a teacher, so everybody gives me flare pens as a gift, so I have a bunch of them. And I'm sort of matching them to the circles, but I also want them to show up a little bit darker as an outline. Next, I'm going to be turning these into bubbles. And I'm going to use these brush tip paint markers for this. But pretty much anything would work. Markers, pencils, gel pens... I'm just using these specifically because I wanted to try them out. And here I'm just making strokes of color in the upper left and lower right of each circle, sort of where the reflections would be. I did work from the darkest to the lightest color of marker, but I don't think it would really matter, because I'm just sort of making swipes of color. You can see a few spots where I sort of messed up the placement of my swipes, but there's so many bubbles that it really isn't very noticeable. I did look up a tutorial on Pinterest for this, so again, no skill needed.
Last, I'm gonna add some highlights with a white paint marker. This paint was a little translucent, so it did need a few coats, but the highlights really bring out the bubbliness of each circle. And that's it, this page is done. Super simple, but it was really easy to do and looks super cute. For this last page, I'm gonna do something a little bit more complicated, but it's still not drawing, so I'm gonna count it. I'm gonna do one of these pages that is very obviously flowers, and I'm gonna use colored pencils. I'm gonna try to color the page in a way that will add more detail and definition to the picture. Don't worry, you'll see what I mean. So I'm starting with the flowers that I feel like are the most defined already, these red ones. And I'm working on the most obvious petals first. Once I feel like I have a good idea of where they are, it's much easier to define the blobby areas and fill in the sort of blank ones. I'm using about four different colors of pencil and just working back and forth, shading in each petal. Next, I'm working on this rose. And again, I'm using the obvious dark strokes of reddy orange as the outline of the petals. Then I can easily extend them where it's needed. From there, it's just a matter of shading and blending. I'm trying to work with the colors that are already there. So some petals have a lot of yellow, while others are mostly orange and red. I did try really hard to work in light layers of pencil. This paper does pretty good, but it only takes about four layers before it's just not gonna accept any more pencil. But with the color that's printed on the paper, you don't really need to press super hard or try to get super high coverage. After finishing the rosebud, the last flower that I felt like is very obvious is this greeny blue tulip. I mean, it might not be a tulip. I only know the names of so many flowers, but it seems vaguely tulipy to me. Now with those done, it's time to move on to the less obvious areas. So I'm just going to start picking off pieces that sort of look like something to me. Like these kind of look like those cottony flower things that people put in arrangements. This looks like maybe a little tulip bud. And these can be tulip buds too. Next, I'm going to do some leaves because I feel like I can kind of see where they are. And then there's only a few areas left. I decided to turn these little red circles into some easy little flower petals with some wonky leaves. I'm trying to work with the shapes that are there and not really add too much. Except for these last few blue blobs. They just weren't saying anything to me. But they're blue, and by this point I've done enough tulip buds that I figured I could draw them pretty easily. So, okay, fine. There is a little bit of drawing here at the end. Last, I did a few more leaves here and there, but I also left a few spaces alone as a sort of blurry background. And here it is done. I really love this page. It was super relaxing and fun to do, and I love how much it pops compared to when it started. So that's all the pages I did this time. What do you think? 
Are you going to try any of these? Let me know in the comments. And if you made it this far, let me know what your favorite flower is. I really want to learn some more flower names. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.